Hi, in this short video, we're going to learn how we can handle errors in Next.js. Go with Sloba. So how errors actually work in Next.js? This is a similar approach that we have actually with the layout component page and with the loading page. So we need to follow a certain uh, naming convention. So let's create a new file and we need to call it as error.js. So this is very important. The another thing is that as it says here right off the bat is this component needs to be a client component. So let's declare use client here. And now we just want to export any component. So I'm going to use the RAFCE to create error component. And now what is important here is that we can actually uh, get the error message from the component that has thrown the error. And the other thing is that we can reset our component and reload the entire page, but we can do that later. So for now, let's just save this. How this works is that when you put an error.js in your component folder here, your page gets wrapped with the error boundary component. So whenever something, some error gets thrown from this page.js, this error.js component uh, is being used as a fallback component. So let's go to the page.js and let's throw some errors. So let's say that if our API request fails, then we want to throw an error. So how we want to do this is here, let's just check what we get from response. So here we want to check if response.ok. So if we don't have an OK response, we want to throw new error. And then we can provide message. So we can use message maybe from response, but here we can just say failed API request, like so. And now if you refresh our page, let's go actually to the bar page here. And if you refresh, we get this error. So this is the error component that we have created here, but let's access this error message that we have passed from here. So if you go here, we can remove this statically created code and we can just go error dot, sorry, we don't, we don't need uh, double curly braces, error dot message like this. Now, if we save this and if you refresh, we should get an error from the bar component, failed API request. So now what we can do with, with this function is we can actually add uh, a button here. So let's wrap this in a paragraph. So it's nicely laid out one below each other. So we can add a paragraph and below this paragraph, we can add a button uh, that says reset me like so. And now we can just call the on click event and call this function. So what this will do is this will just reset and try the request again. So if we save this and if we reset, obviously if you try to reset now, we're also going to get the error because it still fails. But if I go and update our URL, and as you can see, uh, the page uh, is going to you know remain the same because we're using live reload. But still we're getting this bar component, right? This bar error component. But if I click on the reset, we get the actual bar component. So it now uses this uh, default uh, default component instead of using this error component. You may see that we got this error as well. And this is some internal uh, error that we got in Next.js. Most likely we're not going to get this in the production. So, but let's say that you want to use uh, the error on the, on the layout level. So what I'm saying is, so if I go to the layout component here, uh, what we can do is we can provide the error component uh, on the layout route. So it means that our error boundary component is going to wrap all the children. So all these components, bar, counter, prisma, etc., are going to be wrapped with error boundary component. And whenever there's an error in one of these uh, components, we're going to catch it. So instead of providing the error here, what we could do is we can remove this error here and provide it in the root app folder here. So now if we go and if we, let's say, if we throw the error again, in the bar component here. So let's add bad URL. And if you refresh our page, you can see that again, we get this uh, error handling, but now we are handling this from the uh, root app folder. And if you wanna go and wrap the entire application in the error boundary component, so this entire HTML body, all of this, then you would need to provide a global dash error.js file, which wraps the entire application and is a fallback component if something badly happens. So instead of having like the blank page or like this error 
pop up, you're gonna get that customly made component. But this only can be reviewed and seen in the production mode. So we cannot see this in development. Uh, yeah, and that's all for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. And if you wanna support my channel and get a full source code of every single video that I'm doing, feel free to check out patreon.com code with Sloba to get full access. See you there. Well, that's all for this video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more videos like this, click here.